All right. Another episode of Confessions of a Street Broker. And today I got with me my EB. EB. His name is EB to me. EB. And that means my everything brother. That's correct. And um one of my one of my best friends, man, and just, you know, it it's uh we don't see each other as much, but man, I'm glad you're here. And Life when we do talk, way. it's like uh oh, E B. <laughs> Matt Spellman, TIG Partners, Managing Director of Industrial. Uh, thanks for being here, man. This is it's an absolute honor. You know, this is the watching all these episodes. It's really is the who's who yeah. of DFW DFW industrial real estate. So it's an honor. Yeah. It really well, is. it's it's an honor for me to have you here, man. You're just that we got so many stories together. Oh. And I'm gonna start with one. Okay, let's hear it. Had a lot of weather in Dallas Fort Worth the past couple of weeks. Correct. And one time you and I experienced a oh, lot of weather. Oh, Mastodon, Oklahoma. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so there's a band yes. called Mastodon, which Matt Spellman and I both truly love. We're both mm-hmm. metalheads at heart. And um, we discovered each other's uh, love of Mastodon while sitting in our cubes that is on correct. Saturday mornings and blasting it away while we <laughs> inputted our calls and got ready for the next week. Oregon all, day. Oregon yep. time. And... Uh, so golly, I, I I remember we were all pumped. We it was like on a weekday afternoon, and we knew there was weather coming. But we knew, and as soon as we got into Oklahoma, yeah, thought, boy, that's a pretty green sky we yeah. got there. That's uh, very questionable. Yeah, very questionable. State troopers lined up saying, "Hey, you probably shouldn't, yeah, do this." Thought you know, it's more of a guideline. Shouldn't, yeah. Okay, we'll try it out. Yeah, and. uh I you know I think we looked at each other and say they have tornadoes up here right have you heard of those and so, yeah we were familiar more north yeah. Nebraska Kansas yes. Oklahoma is probably safe yeah. incorrect and uh, so me and Spellman are heading up to Oklahoma City on a random Tuesday or Thursday it night I can't remember what it during was during the week yeah for sure for the Clutch in Mastodon oh, concert what a win yeah. And we drive right into an F5 tornado. That's correct. You're <laughs> correct, sir. Every bit of F5. Oh, my gosh. So if anybody remembers the big F5 tornado that hit Moore and all those areas up there many, many years ago, we drove right through the middle of it. Yes, like, we did. Like, we were in the eye of the storm. I don't know. I don't know how we didn't just, like, get lifted and killed or something. I mean, it was, and it was so stupid of us, but we didn't really care. We were just pressing onward to go we to the were show. Onward, upward, higher, higher. And I, I remember because we eventually got to the venue mm-hmm. and it was not the American Airlines Center. No. You know, we're talking about Mastodon and Clutch and Metalheads. So yeah. this is a smaller venue, something very similar to what we would sell yeah. in Garland or yeah. Fort Worth, something like that. And so... The weather was getting so bad. I remember looking outside and thinking, man, that rain is looks different. There's something different about that rain. Well, it was going that way. Yeah. It was going not, yeah. Ah, not, okay. Not it was going horizontal, not that, vertical. That is correct. It may have started out <laughs> yeah. uh, vertical. It did not end up that way. And so then they said, Hey man, this isn't happening. We've got a little bit of a natural disaster outside. Yeah. But okay, well, let's uh heed that warning. Yeah. So I remember driving away. And we make it past, and we parked down on this dirt road. Yeah. Yep. And I was in my – I had the gray car, right? Yeah. That's right. And so as we're driving back, we finally make it back to the hotel. And and I remember looking and thinking, that parking lot doesn't look right. <laughs> Maybe it's because there are two cars <laughs> sunk underneath the water. Yeah. Maybe I won't go that way. Yeah. You know, context clues. <laughs> so – we went around it, thank goodness, because that turned out to be eight or ten feet deep. Yeah. Made it back to the hotel. All I wanted was a Coors Light. Yeah. <laughs> All I wanted. <laughs> Bar was closed. Everybody was gone. Yeah. Power like, was well, out yeah. everywhere. Well, EB, what do you want to talk about? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Quite the experience. Yeah. Yeah, I that remember, was gnarly, dude. I remember just running to the venue. It was like we pulled in and parked and it was like, all right, we just gotta we gotta make a run for it. That's right. And we were just like running through like slosh and just we're getting to this show. The power kept Horrible. going out. That was yes. the issue. They couldn't really yes. finish. They tried. Stage to play. was set up. Everything, Everything was fine. Was ready, ready to go. go. They were going to play, and then 
It's brutal. But man, driving into that, there's, remember that hospital we drove past? Yes, I do. I mean, that hospital was just ripped to shreds. It was horrifying. Yeah. But, hey, it was Mastodon and Clutch, dude. We dude. had to give it a run. We did. It was, and it was it was awesome. But uh, we made up for it. And we did. We saw him at Gillies, and we got we got introduced to um, oh my That's, gosh, why uh, am I drawing a blank here? Uh, the French guys. Oh, um, Gojira, Gojira, Gojira. Yeah. That's right. Oh, I'm gonna go Who, listen to them this weekend. I mean, they're on my gym playlist. Oh yeah. So yeah, yeah Gojira was there. Yeah. Mastodon, and that's is that when we paid the dude? Remember, I remember chickening oh, out. I chickened out because yeah. we saw the line. I was yeah, like, yeah. "Oh my god, that's horrible!" Yeah, you said, "Eb, let's just give that guy at the door a hundred bucks." Yeah, I was like, "All right, let's." You can do it. Yeah, I chickened out immediately. Right, I that bailed. was at um, that was at uh, um, was that Gillies? No, it wasn't was that... Gillies. That was um, it was where Richard Rawlings had that venue right there. It used to be the Grand Theater. That's um, right. Whatever it is, it's not there now. I think Cantex actually owns that site now. Do they really? Yeah. Oh, okay. And um. Yeah, the the security guard sitting there smoking a cigarette on the side. Yeah. I was like, "Hey, man, here's a hundred dollar bill. We want VIP." And dude, would that work? Just I like that. that. Thing. Every time there was a show in town I wanted to go to, I never bought tickets again. For There's that no thing. reason. I was to. like, "I'm just gonna give that guy hundred bucks." And hundred bucks will always go a long way. Yeah, whatever you want. So that was that was good. That's so right. We got to make it up, but um, but uh, yeah, that, that was. was that was un. I mean, that was apocalyptic, man. It was. It was so bad, and I, you know, I was driving back from. I was driving to or from Austin uh -huh. in ninety five, ninety six. Whenever that Gerald tornado yeah. happened, mm -hmm. and I remember seeing that green sky, and thinking the same thing. Hmm, that's not a pretty green. Yeah, you know, that's not a green. I mm -hmm. think I should be seeing. So this was remarkably similar. Yeah, to that, and but. This time we thought, well, you know, let's roll the dice, give it a shot. What are the odds? Well, the odds not yeah. not in our favor. So we lucked out. We really Dude, did. So I was coming back from uh, Oklahoma City yesterday, and I had gotten rerouted the day before when I went up there because there was a wreck or something. But yeah. on the way back, and Will told me about this, but the Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree has like a million square foot distribution facility off of uh, hmm. I thirty five right there. Okay, dude, I bet it probably had. 300,000 feet ripped apart in the middle of it. Really? I mean, you could see, you could just see the, um, the racking and the goods, just the building just peeled open like a can opener from the oh, storm. Oh, the so, Dollar Tree. Yeah. That would be a tough insurance claim. Okay, tell us the value of all of your product. <laughs> like, well, this is $5. Hold on. Let me, let me stop you right there. That's $5. Okay, let me guess. The next one is the dollar. No, 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 no. We're not to the dollar ones yet. That's yeah. also $5. Yeah. So that could be quite the circus for the insurance claim. Oh, my gosh. That is funny. A will will get a kick out of that. So. Wow. And I hope nobody was injured. I have to, you know, the asterisk yeah. is, I hope everybody's fine. Yeah. yeah. Very bad deal. Oh man, that is hilarious. Um, well, let's get into your story, man. Let's uh, why don't you just start? Where are you from? Where'd you grow up? You know, okay, let's see. From Corpus Christi, yep. I was born in Spawn Hospital, <laughs> yes, which seems Literally, like a, a you were great, spawned great spawned. place to um, be spawned. To be spawned, yeah. Um, from Corpus Christi, my dad uh, was a Methodist minister, yeah. my mom was a private school teacher. So the way the Methodist church works is they, he went to, he went to Perkins School of Theology at SMU. And so when they, when the bishop puts you at, in a church, he says, okay, he or she says, okay, grow this congregation and we'll see what happens after that. I mean, it's precisely vague like that. It really is. So my dad, Goes and, yeah, and so he grows the congregation. Spellmanism, sorry. There's a lot of uh, people have to listen for Spellmanism. Yeah, okay. there are going to be a lot of them. <laughs> um, so he, you know, grew the congregations down in South Texas, mm -hmm. and Kingsville and surrounding areas. And so what happens is once you grow these congregations, the bishop says, okay, hey, great job. We're going to move your family and you're going to go to this city. And you're going to grow that congregation. Okay. And, you know, my dad, mom and dad knew that that was part of the drill. Yeah. So 
born in Corpus, moved, lived in Kingsville, um, did some time in Austin, and my dad grew the church um, in Hyde Park from like 50 to 500. Mm -hmm. So the bishop said, great job. Yeah. Great job. Um, We're going to now move you. And my dad said, oh, man, come on. You know, my... Son's going into high school. Yeah. You know, my, my daughter is in elementary school. Can 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 I just stay here? And Bishop yeah. said, you know, let me think. No. Oh, okay. So my dad took a leave and we moved back to Corpus Christi. Okay. Um, let's see. So he's now a history professor. He's retired. My mom and dad are both retired, but he went, you know. He's a, he's a history buff. He's a historian. He's mm-hmm. got eight or nine books out right now. One of them I'm I'm currently reading. Yeah. Um, mom retired, so. But high school was was great. The thing about Corpus Christi is, you, I don't have any good stories from growing up because I was never in trouble. Yeah. It's impossible to get in trouble. <laughs> you go fish or you go to the beach. Yeah. It's like yeah. how was high school? I mean, it was great. It's great. You know, but absolutely no no stories about anything. It's almost as if it didn't exist. I know it was there. Yeah. But it's really hard to get in trouble down Mm. there. Um, Played tennis and baseball. Um, I, I loved both. I was really good at tennis. Yeah. I I don't mind. I don't mind saying that. No, you've always played. You're always tennis. You still play. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Still play, so it's a sport you can play forever. And right. It's not as expensive as golf. It's mm-hmm. not as frustrating as golf. I'll yeah. say that. <laughs> um, so did that, and then went to Stephen F. Austin, where let's just say I enrolled <laughs> and kind of bounced around, and then eventually ended up at University of North Texas, where I graduated. Yeah, and then right out of college, I did. Um, you know the the cool phrase is supply chain. Yeah. Nah, man. I <laughs> sold freight. Yeah. Let's break it down to what it really is. Yeah. I sold freight, and the way that the the business part of it that I was in worked was that the more product you brought in, the more you made for your owner. Yeah. So you would have these thresholds where you wouldn't get paid a commission unless there was a 40 to 50% uh, profit margin. Okay. Well, that's hard to do. If there was no competition, that would be hard to do. Yeah. And so after a while, it was just kind of got monotonous and kind of boring and, oh, let's talk LTL and, you know, bunker adjustment fees on ocean. It's just not again. So that's when I was talking to Brad Dean. Yeah. And Brad said, you know, you should call my buddy Jeremy. Yeah. You know, his brother owns a company, blah, blah, blah. And so that's really how I'm in real estate because of you. Yeah. That truly is the reason that I'm here now. Well, I just remember we went, me, you, and Boozer went and ate at that Chinese restaurant. Bang, bang. You <laughs> bang, called it bang, bang, bang yeah. right? I was like, dude, yeah. this is wild. They call this place bang, bang. And yeah. Everybody's like yelling at each other. Yeah. It's like, this what is. What do you want? Get yeah. The- <laughs> <laughs> this is actually kind of cool. Yeah. I kind of like this. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no. So, uh, Brad, you know, you know, we, you know, we'd actually wanted to hire Brad too, but I think he just, the scar was pretty, the wound was pretty fresh with him. He oh, was at Fisher. He was at I think Fisher. He, I think That's he right. felt like he just got ran through the, the ringer over there. And, you know, as they, you know, from what I hear. You from know, what I hear. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tough, that's a tough starting point. Yeah. To go right into that national account status. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, the best possible starting point is Mercer, Robert Lynn, yeah. Stream. Yeah, boots on the ground. You got to learn how to do it Mm -hmm. first. You got to learn that there's a reason there's a phrase that's called back to basics. Right. You know, it always falls back to that. Yeah. It, uh, so yeah. So, so Brad hooks us up, um, you know, and Jeff interviews you and, you know, away we go. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, uh, I don't know if you want to tell your story of your first. Well, the first, what, yeah, where do we want to start? Yeah. I mean, you, so, you, what's the the first 
the first day, the first cold call. I yeah. remember my very first cold call with Jeff. Yeah. Uh, like, okay. And it was uh, in that, that, that Marcus and Brockwood area. Yeah. And so I'm all pumped up, you know, I'm ready to go. I'm like, man, this is great. Real estate, blah, blah, blah. I got Jeff with me. Everything's awesome. We walk up, knock on the door. The guy opens the door. Says, hey, can I help you? I said, yeah. hi, I'm, I'm Matt. <laughs> just like that the guy says hello matt and then jeff jumps in i was like what is this what did i get myself into here i froze up immediately oh that's that first funny. cold call with jeff we've gone over all this training how to do it you know <laughs> i'm ready to rock let's start this new career and yeah. hi i'm matt yeah was the first thing that i said and there was about five seconds yeah and it seemed like an eternity eternity oh brutal oh, funny but yeah i remember that clearly how yeah. awful yeah that was but ah, is what it is now yeah no um it, it uh i just remember, i remember the first day you rode around with me you know we were just like oh man we were red bird all over the place we were everywhere yeah. and i didn't want to in one of the one of the stops that we made you were doing a presentation yeah um, a, a tenor rep presentation, probably. Yeah. And so I, I didn't know what was going on. I just knew to just stay still, yeah. keep your mouth shut. And then, again, it's all these weird little details. I can't tell you what I did yesterday, but I can remember these little details. Yeah. Remember on your binder, the binder clip came loose. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, man, I have to help. So all I did was just put the ring meticulously back. put the ring back on there. As if I'm some kind of savior, I'm going to save the day here because I'm going to make this binder better. Yeah. As you're going on, you're telling them, yeah, this option here, I don't like that. I don't like that. And I'm trying to listen as I'm trying to put this binder back together. But it's, it's amazing all the little things that yeah. you remember. You know, that's when you're starting off in a brand new career. Yeah. And this should be the one that, you know, sets you up for life. Yeah. You know, there are little details that you just... You just remember that just never go away. Right. So no, it's um so let me ask you this. What made you think? I mean, I know Brad, you know, kind of made that push, but like, you know, you knew you were making someone else a bunch of other money. So what made right. you think real estate did anything make you think real estate? And then Brad said, Hey, you should call this guy, or was it just kind of talking, hey, call I, this guy? I or? wasn't thinking real estate. Mm -hmm really at all. I was in a position where I didn't really know you know what I really wanted to do mm -hmm. was move to Port Aransas and be a fishing guide. Yeah. But you talk about not even close to in the cards, yeah. you know, doing that. Um, but it wasn't even I thought, okay, medical sales, everybody seems right. to do well. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen a soul who does medical sales working on a Friday. Yeah. You know, they're all wearing shorts and flip-flops. Nothing against medical sales. Again, I'm going to have a lot of asterisks here. <laughs> but they seem to do really well. Mm -hmm. Seem to be comfortable. Always yeah. very happy. Maybe look into something like that. And so that might have been the reason I talked to Brad. Yeah, because Britt was in medical. Oh, Brad was in medical Brad sales. Brad was in medical. Britt was in medical sales. And Britt was in as well. So you had a conversation with one of them on a Friday in their flip-flops? <laughs> they were more than likely in flip flops. More than likely, although I cannot. It's funny, I cannot they're in real estate that. now. They're both in real estate now. Uh, but yeah, that's and so Brad brought that up. Yeah, and my so my cousin back mm -hmm. in the '80s, um, he lived uh, in Austin, right? Yeah. And so you know, this is you know in '82 or '83. I was seven years old, right? Yeah. Well, we'd go to Cousin Max's house, and he had three or four cars. Yeah. I remember he lived on Indian Mound Road in North Austin. Yep. And asking Cousin Max, what do you do? He said, I'm in real estate. I said, really? Okay. This was, you know, 1982. Yep. But I never, I never forgot that. And so the way he got his start, and I'm going to be about 70% correct on this, because it's been many sure. years, a few Coors Lights since then. But he bought an acre of land, mm -hmm. and he bought it for $300,000, something like that. He bought it. His dad co-signed for it. 
he could make it about two months on the payments before he was done. Yeah. And towards the middle of the second month, a developer came and said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you 800000 for that piece of property. Yeah. And so just like that. So now he owns hundreds of acres, but he owns mobile home parks. Okay. That's what he does. Just yeah. scattered all around. And he always did really well. Yeah. Always did really well. So that was always kind of in the the back of my mind. There's a yeah. lot of things in the back of my mind. <laughs> but, you know, as, as opportunities come up like that, like with, with yeah. you and Jeff and Brad, you know, they pop up. It's like, oh, I remember thinking about that. You know, you have that aha moment. Mm-hmm. It's almost like a, a movie, right? It's mm-hmm. like, oh, wow, yeah, because I was talking about this. September of 82 when I was seven, like I knew anything, you know, I knew that I liked peanut butter and jelly. That's about the extent (laughs) of my knowledge back then. So however, however it works out, you know, God doesn't make mistakes. I don't want to get too theological here, but I, that, that is a principle that I find to always be true. Yeah. Well, no, it's, uh, it, it, um, you you talk about the details and I think that was something that you and I kind of grew up doing together in the business was the details. I mean, we literally set, you know, kind of diagonal and a Mm -hmm. four way cube from each other. And it was, you know, just, you know, (laughs) listening to each other's conversations all day long. And then I learned a lot from that. You know, you you know what I was thinking about this, just a minute ago or, you know, like I don't, I don't know that this happens anymore, but I mean, every Saturday we were all at the office. Every one of us. All of us. You know, it was like, wear your, you know, workout gear to the office day. Mm-hmm. But everybody was there for, from 8 a.m. to 12. Everybody was. And I don't know that that happens anymore. I I can't, I haven't seen it. You know, that's not something that, that we, you know, implement. It certainly helps. Yeah. It's certainly recommended that, you know, don't wait till Monday mm-hmm. to get everything ready for the week because you've immediately lost today. Yeah, be ready to get out on the streets and do what you need to do. It, uh, you know, when I was, you know, when I had office at Mercer Company and I would walk over to the printer on a Monday and I see someone just printing all their calls up, I uh, just kind of look at them and go, "You've kind of already lost. You lost. You lost the week." Except for Keenan Cook, he can do that. He's an absolute machine. Yeah. Mowing the grass, dude. <laughs> Mowing the Mowing grass. the grass. Um, but young guys, mm-hmm. you know, young guys starting out, I'm like, oh, you're um, cramming for the exam, huh? Uh-huh. You know, like you should be ready to walk out of you know, walk out of your Monday morning meeting and go straight to making calls. Straight to making calls. Um, and uh, but that's what we. I mean, we were. You walked out of there on Saturday morning or Saturday at noon, and it's like I'm done. Yeah. Like I don't, I don't have to think about it. You Not know? at all. Uh, maybe that's what some guys do now. They just don't think about it, anyways. You know, that's fine until yeah. You know, it comes time for okay. Let's shit gets hard. Let's see how you're doing. <laughs> yeah. You know. Well, you know, before we stepped in here, you know, we were kind of talking about this because you're, you know, you're kind of, you're you're raising up a team and mm-hmm. and uh, the rea- uh, the realization that this is a hard business, you know, all these people that have, you know, so the younger generation coming in have got to see their friends maybe get in a couple years ahead of them and That's not it. really have to do anything. Um, uh, how, you know, it's not hard to make a deal when you have four offers to pick from. Correct. You know, you That's don't correct. have to be a rock. You're gonna. You're actually going to execute this because there's enough other people involved in it that they will make it happen. That's right. Um, but when it's starting to get to the point now in the market, and I think the market's going to get it's. It is just the the gears are locked up right now, yes, they are. and um, you have to get really. You have to become a real estate person. Yes, you do. You don't have to just become a paper pusher. That's right. Um, and uh, I think the guys that learn how to do it, there's certain young guys that learn how to do it, and there's certain some guys where I'm just like, probably not going to happen. It's probably not going to happen. You can probably hang around the industry, but sure. you're you're going to make a decent living, but you're never going to be a, a rock star, right. you know. And um, and uh, but like it, it's, I I loved. I loved being there every Saturday morning. It was like, great. It was, it was like, the, the boiler room. It was, it, the, it was a locker room. It was man. a locker That's room. That's what it was. You know? And um, it, uh, 
but man, I think I think getting guys to do that now, they look at you like you had three heads. I know. You know? Um, it's hard to do. But they the good thing is is that what I've found about, you know, the the group that we have and even our interns, they're all really smart. Yeah. Really, really, really mm-hmm. smart, highly educated. Um so it occurred to me that, you know, a smart individual with drive should be okay. Right. Should be just fine. So the fact that, you know, you can't teach intelligence, you know, it's there or or really it, it it's not. Okay. Yeah. But you can you can teach how to do it to get the drive going. You know, yeah. you can't start a car at 60 miles an hour. Just hey man, it's good, it's gotta get there. And right. You have to understand that it's got to get there. But to have the drive, you got to have the why. Yeah. And why, why are you doing this? And sometimes it's hard when you're in your 20s. Mm-hmm. Well, what is what is your why? You're not thinking about buying a house. You're not mm-hmm. thinking about any of that. You know, when I started, you know, we knew, Kristen and I knew that we were going to start a family. Yeah. And so, you know, I was in my 30s. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I, my why is going to be, you know, whenever our child is born, you know, everything needs to be set and ready to go. So it's kind of hard for somebody to find a why, you know, yeah. there's some that just have it. Yeah. They just, they just have it naturally. They have that drive and the majority of them are the athletes. Mm-hmm. Um, they have that drive, the mm-hmm. discipline to do what it, what it takes. Um, but it's not, it's not rocket science. Like you said, it's just getting out, doing the work. You know, I told a story. This is one of my favorites. Um, the have you heard the pottery class story? Mm-mm. Okay, so there's a professor. He's got two groups of students, and again, this is I did not make this up. Okay, I stole this from mm-hmm. a podcast that I heard however long ago, or on YouTube, whatever. So this professor has two groups of students. Okay, last semester class pottery class. He takes one group. He says, "Okay, you're going to be graded on one thing and one thing only." Mm-hmm. And that is to make the perfect pot. Here it is. You spend this entire semester just making one perfect pot. They said, oh, this can be easy. Goes to the other group. He said, okay, you're going to be graded on one thing and one thing only is to make as many pots as you can. Over, you will be graded on pure volume. Okay. At the end of the semester, not only did the group with the most pots succeed and make the most pots, but they also made the perfect pot because of the reps, right. the continuous practice on getting it done over and over and over again. Not only did they achieve the volume, but they achieved the perceived perfection of the perfect pot. Yeah. And I love that because it really is about the reps. Get the practice right. over and over and over again, and you will perfect your craft, whatever it is. Yeah. Whatever you choose to do, you can't sit, wait, and hope. Mm-hmm. You know, you can tinker with one thing, but all it takes for the one perfect pot is the small bit of pressure that breaks the whole thing. Right. And now it's gone. It's losing that one big deal you've been working on for two years. Now what do you have left? Now you break a few of these. Okay, I've got 100 more. Yeah. And so I've always loved that story when it relates to, you know, sales or life. You can really mold it, that yeah. story, into whatever you're doing mm-hmm. to make it, you know, give you more drive mm-hmm. or more clarity or to better understand what it is that you're trying to do. Whatever it is in life, the only thing worth doing is worth doing right. Right. That's it. So if you're going to do it, make the most of it. Do it over and over and over and over again. Become the expert if that's what you want to do. Then do it that way. So I've always loved loved the pottery class story. It's that's, one of my favorites. That's a really good story. It is a good one. Again, I really like that. Not mine. I Oh, everything everyone has is stolen. He abs- stole that from someone else. Yes, he did. It's all in Proverbs. <laughs> That is correct. <laughs> God, don't make mistakes. Every, everything that anybody's That's ever right. said on the internet has already been stated in Proverbs. So. Yeah, it's like Noel Gallagher with Oasis said that. They yeah. said, you know, a lot of your songs sound like other songs. He said, yeah, I lifted them. He said, I'm not a genius. I'm just a fan of music. Yeah. You know? That's all it is. It's it. uh, 
it, it, there's a term called uh, steal like an artist. Yes. You know, uh, the, um, you know, but that pottery story is pretty interesting. You know, you always, you always hear the guy that's like always trying to get ready to make cold calls, but never goes and makes right. them. That's the guy trying to make the one perfect Trying pot. to make the one perfect mm -hmm. pot. And if it works, great. Yeah. But the disadvantage to the one perfect pot working is that he's going to try it again. He or yeah. she is going to try it again. Yeah. And eventually it's going to fail. Yeah. It's going to fail. And then you've lost X amount of time and effort that you can't get back. Well, you know, it's funny in the beginning of your career in this, in this thing, you know, making cold calls is kind of, it's, it's the work part. It's a lot of the work part. And then as you get older, you can't make as many cold calls because you're so knee deep in transactional work. Yes. That making cold calls is actually therapeutic and fun at yes. some point. You're like, this it is, is kind of fun. I, yes. you know, it, uh, I love going on the calls with the, the new brokers. Yeah. Because they're all new markets. Mm -hmm. You know, it kind of, I'm good for about 10 yeah. before I'm yeah. like, okay, I've, I've, I've seen this yeah. before. You know, mm -hmm. the, the ultimate goal of the cold call, and this is what needs to be, you know, very clear. It's not just so you can make 10 and get back to the office. Mm -hmm. You got to find something. Try, yeah. You're trying to find something in there. It's a numbers game, but not just so, you know, on your monthly report, you can say, I made this many cold. Find something in there. You know, yeah. This is something you have to find. It's not just, oh, okay, I got the info, check that box. Yeah. It's not, that's not how this works. You know that, I know that, but yeah. sometimes it has to be, you know, reinforced. Yeah. Um, yesterday I was in, um, Oklahoma City and is yep. I, I mean, I can't tell you the last time I really made a cold call. Um <laughs> but uh, you know, there's in the business that on the side of the table I'm in now, there's kind of a constant capital raising mm -hmm. aspect to it. And I was like, you know, man, I'm I'm just gonna take street broker mentality to capital raising. No because reason not to nobody because I don't think any of those guys really do that. They it's country club stuff like that and i'm yeah. you know i'm i was never born into that so neither i so i was up there and i was like i'm gonna call I, I, you know i have this database that tells me who family offices are or whatever and i'm like okay i'm gonna go call <laughs> there's three of them up there right and it was like it was so fun my first cold call was on loves oh like, really? you know, i was like hell yeah <laughs> this is gonna be fun i they have a compound up there and i walk up it's all access controlled but the lady's like washing the window and you know yeah. and she doesn't even speak english i'm like hey i need to be here and she's like oh let me open this for you know it clicks clicks me in i walk in and i'm like i'm here they're like who are you here to see i'm like oh so and so and, you know, and it's funny because I had, you know, three guys with their family office, you know, right. they, they house their family office within their compound. How big is that compound? Oh, gosh, it's probably, I don't know, probably 200,000 feet of office, Play. you know. Play. Um, uh, anyways, I I didn't get to see the guy, but I had the right guy and I found out I had the right building on this compound, you know. So, I mean, it was like, oh, when I come back, you know, when right. I'm, well, I'm going to call, the, you know, I got all fired up. I was like, oh, I got this. And then I called in another family office and I kind of got through to someone. I was like, oh, man, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to get this. Done. Absolutely. And so, so you're just walking in, right? Just walking in. There you go. You know, you, how far would you have gotten on the phone? You've you reached got, somebody who yeah. would have transferred you to somebody else. Mm -hmm. Then you're back, and then all of a sudden it's disconnected. Hey, I don't know what happens. It just it's easier to be. Yeah. You can be whoever you want to be over the phone. Yeah, especially on the other side. Yeah, but when you walk in, like you know, you've got a presence about you. When you walk in, yeah. there's a confidence that's that's already there. Yeah, and so that you know, you walk in with good posture, and yeah, uh, hey, I'm looking for this person. Yeah. Nobody who gets in your way is is going to intercept you and say no. Yeah, it's not going to happen. Right, not going to happen. No, it was uh, you know, and I had to leave behind. Right, there you know, you go. I was like, I got to have something to leave this guy. You know, and it's you know, just a you know, like a two page fold out on us and what we do and and all that stuff. And uh, but uh, I was like, oh, I'm all geeked out to do this because mm -hmm. I've built this database of all these family offices. I'm like, I'm going to go. I'm going to go meet everybody, awesome. you know, so. <laughs> well, while you're up there, make the most of your time. Well, yeah, no, I, you know, we looked at a couple deals and, you know, and, uh, and, you know, but, uh, and then do that too. You yeah. know, I mean, those, you know, it, I, I don't, I don't know how that world works, honestly, that well, right. my, all the equity I've raised has been just kind of through 
hustling up old brokerage clients. And mm-hmm. you know, we've got some larger partners now, but I was like, you know, it, this is, I can do this on a, on a lot larger scale if I have sure. a lot more firepower. And, and so I'm like, I just, because, just you know, and you're successful because you know how to do it on a smaller scale. Yeah. You know, you, you, you started, you, you started with, Hey, you know, I think I've got this thing. You know, like when you and I yeah. had lunch yeah, and on the, the napkin, you yeah. said, dude, I figured it out, bro. Yeah. So when I figured out how they're doing it. Yeah. And we you scribbled it out. I thought, wow, that's that looks right. Yeah. And you've taken that principle mm-hmm. from that napkin that you did that quick math on. Yeah. And there you are. Yeah. No, it's uh it's been fun. It's been a good journey. It's been a good transition to, you know, to kind of do something new. It's different, you know, kind of building a team. You're kind of building the team now. Yeah. And and uh and uh, that's that's kind of fun to me because you know, I was always a lone wolf, really. Yeah. And, um, and I I, f- I feel like you know in 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 brokerage that's probably where I belong is a lone wolf. But um, but in this you need an army to to handle this. You have to, you have to. And um, but uh, well, why don't you touch on that, man? Like, tell me about the team you're building. I think that's you know they're what all... a great person for those guys to learn from. Thank so. you. I appreciate that. Um, th- again, they're they're all very very smart. Mm-hmm. Certainly smarter than me. Yeah, um, they're very young in their twenties. A lot of them right out of college. We've got four or five brokers that have been there a mm-hmm. while, yeah. and then we decided to go ahead and train them the way. You know, Matthew Hickey is my yep. partner in this, mm-hmm. and he's been instrumental in helping you know grow the team and build the team. But just each one of them has. Uh, almost a completely different set of skills. Yeah. And so trying to find the skills that they have and harness them to not just make the cold calls, but, but understand the business. The good thing is, is they, once they learn something, they retain it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not something that has to be over and over and over again. And, you know, our plan is no secret. Yeah. It's 50 cold calls a week. Mm-hmm. Here it is. Eat yep. lunch in your car. Yep. You know, you do your tours from 130 to 430. I mean, it's you organize your day on the weekends, organize your week for the next week. You yep. know, it's no secret mm-hmm. what this is. It's the matter of execution. Yeah. It's the hardest part. So very young, various, you know, different backgrounds, um, very well educated, but they all have that look in their eye like, I want to make it. Yeah, I'm gonna make it. Mm-hmm. You know the the initial, sometimes the initial cold call can be a little. It can kind of be. It can overcome you. Yeah, you know, it can really just kind of send you into this little ball, especially if you know you go like zero for ten, mm-hmm. which happens all the time. Sure, or somebody asks you to leave. Shows you the gun. You know, my favorite was when they let the dog off the leash. You know, the dog's <laughs> name was always Thor or Zeus, you know, something like that. Chopper, sick balls. The chopper, <laughs> sick balls. Yes, I like that reference, mm-hmm. by the way. So they're 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 driven in their own. They all have their own different kind of why. Yeah. You know, and they're all young enough to where they understand that it, the opportunity that they have mm-hmm. is huge. Yeah. Getting into Dallas Fort Worth real estate. It's hard to do. It's hard to get into where somebody will give you a submarket and train you, give you an office, supply all these things for you because there's a lot of folks that want in on this. It's the NFL. It is. It it's is the NFL. the NFL. Especially for industrial. Here we are. You know, it, it, it's it's so crazy that you know, I mean, we work other markets, mm-hmm. you know, but those markets, other markets are 150 million feet. Yeah. When yeah. you hear Austin, you hear San Antonio, it's 150, yeah. 100. That's a neighborhood that is. in Dallas. That is a neighborhood. We are turning into a metropolis. Mm-hmm. There's 1.2 billion feet of industrial. I mean. It seems to me <laughs> that out of 1.2 billion square feet, you can probably carve out just a little piece and be set for life. I worked 22 million feet. Do you? I did. I mean, that's what I, when I dumped Redbird and all that stuff, yeah. and I was like, I worked, I worked two exits off of I-35. <laughs> I worked Regal Row. I'm sorry, three. I worked from Regal Row 
Mockingbird to Inwood. Yep. And that was it. That was and it. Past Inwood, I didn't I didn't go past Inwood and I didn't go to the other side of the levee. And I just worked in that little pocket. And you did a great. Yeah, it worked out pretty well. You don't have to you don't have to go to the end of the pier to catch fish. Yeah. I, I use a lot of fishing references. Sure. Well, that one is mine. Sure, you're a fisherman. Fact. Yeah, I'm a fisherman. <laughs> you know, again, the submarket, you know, the math will dictate, you know, what is it, 95% of everybody that moves stays within five miles? Yeah. There you go. Stay put. They're all right there. Be the expert, you know. Yeah. Forrest, uh, you know, Miller, I know those were my, Yeah. that was it. Yeah. I didn't, didn't need to go anywhere. And, you know, I remember the days in our meetings. Mm-hmm. I would have something available. Somebody, you know, you or, or Jeff or Boozer, I'm looking for for this. And I would ask, would they go to Garland? Yeah. Ugh. No. <laughs> We're not going to Garland. Like, okay. Yeah. I'll continue to ask that. And over the last three to five years, would they go to Garland? Yeah. Is there something in Garland? It's just amazing how the tides have turned. Yeah. Um, for Garland, Garland is embracing who they are being Garland. Yeah. They, you know, when people leave Garland, they move to Richardson or Plano. Like I've made the big time. That's uh that's moving across the road. Yeah, right? man. Yeah. So, but Garland has embraced who they are. Yeah. And it's, you know, there's some more technology moving and, you know, but it's, it's still, it's still blue collar, man. There's some great developments going on there, but it's, you know, don't forget who you are, where you came from. Yeah. yeah it's almost applicable to municipalities, you yeah. know, and they've embraced it. And now there's 2% vacancy, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Garland is Irving's cousin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Garland, when you look at the real estate development, um, you know, Irving probably should have been the primest real estate in the DFW yeah. Metroplex. Yeah. Agreed. There is more multifamily in Irving than in any city in Dallas Fort Worth. Is that right? Yeah. I don't know if that's exactly right, but I'll tell you if you go on CoStar and look, sure. It, and you go city by city, it's daunting how much blotch of huh. things come up. And Garland's the opposite. It's in well, it's not the opposite, but the asset class it picked was industrial. Sure. It and did. uh and it did well. And so I always say that, you know, they're they're like sister cities, you know, because they're very just, you know, they're not gonna really there's not an economic there's not a great economic area of Irving. Hmm. Okay. People call that I mean the I mean, I guess you could say Los Colinas. Sure. As they try to distance themselves from Irving because people think Los Colinas is another town. <laughs> but uh, yeah, obviously it, didn't it, go to the Byron Nelson. In my opinion, north of Esther's was not even really Irving growing up. Like hmm. it was an, an area that was a, another town. I'm sure there's a neighborhood like that in Garland or something. But oh yeah, but, absolutely. If you go if you go north 78, you go past the George Bush up there in Garland, right on yeah. the, the golf course. Yeah, hmm. that's. Yeah. Night and day difference. But the mass of it is mm-hmm. just, you know, I, I don't know what the price of a home like that is now, but call it a $150,000 home, $200,000 home. That's that's what it was. Yeah. Not anymore. Um, and, uh, or that's what it is. And so I always just thought that was funny. I think Garland and all that's the, the, the same, the same thing. So, um, but, uh, well, okay. Besides your five second eternity cold call, oh, oh, it's brutal. give me another funny one. I know you got some just great ones. All right, I've got a lot. I don't want to throw. I'm not really throwing anybody under the bus. Okay, so there was a. This was a, this was ten years ago. Okay? okay, so this is, you know, I was maybe. Oh man, that this may have been 2013. Mm-hmm. So I'd been in the business two years. And so I'd been making the calls, doing it, and it was it was starting to happen. Everything was great. And so I cold called this this company. It was an HVAC company, and they, I walked in. And they had the stack of cards from every other broker. I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> let's see how we can wade through these. Hey, look at me, waters. So eventually, you know, it paid off. They said, okay, here's what we need. We need ten yep. to fifteen thousand feet, but it has to be sprinkler and it has to be standalone so if you can find that okay it's like dude 
Well, I knew my availables mm -hmm. and I knew them. I knew there was one. There was one. Mm -hmm. It was 548 Forest Center Plaza. Online release, sprinkler, you know, clear height wasn't the best. Thought, let's go, hop in the car, let's go. We can go look at it. It's like, oh, you, you know, it kind of took him by surprise. I said, yeah. I tell you what, I'll call the broker. Let's go look at it tomorrow and let's do it. He said, it's sprinkler, right? Yep, it's sprinkler. Okay, awesome. And they needed, they did some welding back there. And so their insurance requirements and their corporate, sure. they needed the sprinkler system. So the, the broker on it, we show up the next day. Broker's just the sweetest little thing. Residential <laughs> broker's super sweet and bubbly and loving life. And so, you know, I pull up there with my guys. And we walk in. We walk in. There's a lot of office. There's some drop ceiling. And I remember looking at the drop ceiling. I thought, I don't see that sprinkler head out of there. <laughs> okay. I said, all right, let's just, let's just keep walking. So they immediately go to the warehouse. And they look up. And they said, there are no sprinklers in here. And so I'm like, oh, no, what do I do here? And so the, I can't remember her name. She's super sweet. She comes back over. I said, hey, I thought you said this was, this was sprinkler. She said, oh, oh, it is. Here, follow me. I thought, okay. So my guys come with me. We walk, and I see her turn this corner, and I look up, and she's going to a box. And on the box, it says Rainbird <laughs> for the sprinkler system in the small the, patch of grass. The irrigation <laughs> And I thought, oh, no. Oh. Yeah, sprinkler, because it has sprinkler heads yeah. for the small. And so I'm like, oh, no. So we walk up, and she opens up the rainbird. And one of my guys is standing right here. And I could just see him doing, you know, the Stewie Griffin? <laughs> looking at me. I could just see his head turning, <laughs> looking at me as she, bless her heart, as she fiddles with this sprinkler system. And it didn't even turn on. Oh, so it was no. like you talk about a double whammy. Oh man! And so that was the um, the <laughs> end of the tour because I was so sure about it, mm -hmm. and it was there wasn't anybody in there, so I hadn't been in to verify that. But yeah. you know, every other bill. That's why. So that's why I knew that with Cooper, mm -hmm. Brett Lewis, Whitmer. Josh Barnes, whatever was there on yeah. my availables was accurate. Yeah. I knew that they were always going to be accurate, but it never occurred to me that sprinkler system would be for the 200 square feet of grass yeah. that's right there that the rainbird didn't even work anyway. Yeah. So that was remarkably embarrassing. Um, but nevertheless, decent story. You know, that, there's one on uh, Inner Urban that I sold for Fred Bolands. Mm -hmm. And Inner Urban's an interesting street. Um, there's a car dealership on one side, and all the buildings are just very narrow, and they're all just lined up along there, and the yeah. dart, dart rail goes right behind them. And it was vacant with the exception of one little bitty tenant that was in there. And so the week before, I had learned about cap rates. Okay, and I'm not the best math guy. I can add and subtract and multiply, division, eh, <laughs> throw a decimal in there, and I'm I'm out the door, right? <laughs> so we had just learned about cap rates and and how they work. So I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. So the buyer and their real estate attorney show up. He's in the bail bonds business, right? He's a okay. bail, bail bonds. We walk in there. And he's looking, and his real estate attorney says, okay, what's the cap rate on this? I wouldn't have known what she was asking had I not learned the week before. I said, well, the, there's no cap rate. This isn't an investment. You know, this is just a month-to-month -month tenant right there. This is yeah. an owner-user. So I'm like, dude, yeah. check me out, man. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. And so the the buyer goes in. He's looking looking around. He's like, every, and he's like I, don't, I don't like this. I said, okay, tell me what you don't like about it. I can't fix it, yeah. but I can at least know, you yeah. know, when I talk to Fred, um, tell him, you know, what you didn't like about it. And right about the time as he's on the fifth thing he doesn't like about it, the dark train goes by. And I said, look, man, how many of your future clients were on that dart that just went by? 
you're in the bail bonds business, right? He said, yeah. I said, well, how many times does that dart go by? How many folks in there wouldn't mind seeing a big old bail bond sign? Is there on their way to whatever they're doing in the dart. Mm-hmm. So would that make a difference at all? He bought the building. <laughs> That's genius. And so That's genius uh, on your feet. Thank yeah, you, it was. And again, I'm not trying to disparage mm-hmm. or say anything bad about anyone that rides the dart. It was a Hail Mary last minute. Hey, what do you think about this? Putting your sign on the back of your building. Yeah. So that you have... Dart traffic all day long, big old bail bonds. You're bound to get something out of that, right? Yeah. Yeah, he bought it. God, what a great, what a great on your toes. Man, it thought. was it was tough. It was a tough Is building still in to there? sell. I haven't been there in a long time. <laughs> so I don't I I don't it hadn't needed a bail bond. <laughs> no, I guess it, it, get bailed out. He up. was in there, he was still in there four years after I sold it. So yeah. apparently. You know, he had this big old gorilla dude was, you know, like his his guy in there. He always answered the door when I went by. Yeah. Hey, you remember me? No. (laughs) It's the end of this conversation. (laughs) Okay. It's the end of that. So those are just just two that I can. That's that's interesting. But like, let's um um, how about like just a a crazy deal you pulled off or very unique. Like we always kind of have that one, I guess maybe you're, you know, something that just was falling apart. Like, honestly, I saw it one yesterday. You don't have to talk about that one if that's not it, but the, like when you Jericho run, you know, or something oh, like that. Yeah. Uh, Santa Ana. Santa Ana was a Jericho run. So, um, MPI wood was in 20,000 feet. Mm-hmm. Um, right off of Miller Asset, that area right there. And so the first time I called on them was July of 2011. Okay. And talked to Jason and Carly. Kept going in, said, now we don't need anything. No, we don't need anything. And then in 2013, right in the beginning, they said, hey, we need 15,000 feet yeah. additional. Big D bolt. Said, just go right across the street. Yeah. You know, there wasn't a sign, wasn't anything. I'll talk to the broker. We'll get you in there. Boom, got him in there. So that's immediate credibility, right? So they then, I keep speaking with them, talking to them. Then they say, look, we need like 250,000 feet. So that's great. I called Jeff, said, hey, Jeff, um, MPI needs 250,000 feet. Shut the blank up. So <laughs> no, they, they really do. And so we looked at 4040 Forest Lane, mm-hmm. um, the old international, international building. Mm-hmm. Um, looked at that. They wanted it. I said, okay, let's let's get this process started. Give me your financials. Let's start there. And they had a factoring company. Yeah, I they, remember this. They factored um, everything. So owners said, you know, I'd love to. But if something happens with one or two of their vendors, yeah. then it's all over. And I didn't really, again, I learned what factoring was right then and there. Right. And understood kind of how it worked. But I had three backup options just in case, you know, pottery class, just yep. in case. Yep. And the one that they settled on was Santa Ana, but it was for sale only. And thank goodness Pete Richardson was the broker on that. Mm-hmm. And so I went to Pete and said, dude, would they lease this? He says, for sale. Would they lease this? He's like, all right, let me see what we can do. So he said, okay, they'll do they'll do a lease. What kind of term do you want? So we want 10 years, bro. Yeah. Let's do 10. Yeah. Let's yeah. do 10. Let's do that 10. So I said, but we got to have a new roof. He said, I'm not going to give you a new roof for a lease. So I'm going to try not to Arizona, it. Arizona, it, and we can touch on the Arizona yeah. story. <laughs> so we get it all negotiated. We have a call with the owners. The roof is going to be put on 10 year lease and the owner of MPI owner of the building hated each other. Oh no. And it was from the first minute they didn't get along. And they were 
going back and forth because the building wasn't going to be ready and they needed an additional month of gross free rent. Yeah. And the owner said, no, I'm not going to do that. Not going to do that. And they said, well, we have to, we can't do this. And so it was just crumbling, crumbling apart. So I thought, you know, Boozer was talking about a Jericho run that he did on that building in, um, I think it was in Arlington or something like that. He had yeah. just learned in Sunday school about the fall of the walls of Jericho. I thought, you know what I'm doing? I'm yeah. doing it. I got to, man. This yeah. is a huge, huge deal for me. This <clears throat> this was in 2014 when it finally, this is October, November 2014. And so I get there on a Sunday morning, and this is 84,000 feet, and I'm going through fences and brush, <laughs> yeah. and there's rail behind it. Yep. And a uh, couple dudes living there. And so I did. I ran around it seven times. Mm-hmm. That Sunday morning, I just prayed out loud the, the entire time, you know. Probably looked like a crazy person there. Mm-hmm. That Monday, we looked back at the lease. I called MPI and said, you know, you don't need that additional month of gross rent because the lease doesn't commence for another month and you've already paid your first month's rent yeah. up front. That gives you your 30 days and it doesn't affect your accounting. Yeah. Lease signed. Woo. It's awesome. And so it, there were EB, there were a ton of other details that went into that, but yeah. that's the, that's, that's the, that's the crux of it. That's the, in, in a nutshell. Yeah. And I'm three for three on Jericho runs. So yeah. I don't want to do them all the time. No. Mm-mm. Did it on a building on Sandin. Yeah. Um, did a Jericho run. I've done two of them. Have you? How they work out? Both worked. I did there it on my go. children's distribution deal. Oh, that, and that's uh, solid. I did it on a, a deal in Brook Hollow. It's funny. It's a building. Uh, if you listen to the episode with me and Matt Elliott, I was talking about a yeah. building that George Musa owns. Uh-huh. And, when I put that tenant in that deal, I, I Jericho run it. <laughs> yeah. Cutting through it. the fences, running through the rail bed, just running it. You, you know? just, and, you, uh, you got to do it. It, it was, was uh, you know, last night we all went and watched the, the Maverick game at uh, Mercer Company's office. And I just, I got there early and I just went and walked all the streets back there behind it in the Trinity and go. all that stuff. And I was like, golly, Man. like Motor Circle. I was like, Motor I'm, Circle, boy, I'm, what a I win. lived here when I was 20s, you know. Yeah. It's, uh, it was just you know, all those old buildings and just run. It, it's, it's such an interesting, you know, but, but the Jericho run, pretty sure it's undefeated. Undefeated. Yeah. It's undefeated for me. Yeah. And again, you have to be, you can't just, I mean, Hey, look, worry about nothing. Pray about everything. Right. Right. But keep that Jericho run. Let that thing. Yeah. I mean, if it's dying and you know, you think, look, it's, it's it's gone. In fact, I'll give you the Sandin story. Okay. The Sandin Jericho run. Two fawn rugs was in twelve thousand feet on Miller Road. Okay. And they said, look, we we want to buy a building. I said, okay. So what do you need? They said we need like twenty, twenty five thousand feet. And I said, boom, it's right there. Called Stephen Cooper. I said, Coop, you need to come see this building. He said, okay. So we look at it, and my group, you know, they said, look, we, we love it. Make the offer. I make the offer on a Thursday. Coop calls me Friday morning. He said, hey, look, I got another group that made the same offer, but they were willing to put up $20,000 firm mm-hmm. immediately. It was immediate. He said, as soon as, as soon as we signed the LOI, the money is going into escrow and the contract is executed. The 20,000 goes to my owner. Yeah. It's like, ah. So I called Tufan and said, hey, here's what happened. A group said that just to put it under contract, they would give $20,000 non-refundable yeah. earnest money. I said, I, I cannot recommend you do that. So just don't do it. They said, well, what if we do 30? I said, look, you can, but I wouldn't. Just, you don't want to do that. You don't want to say, pay for a car before you test drive it. Mm-hmm. You know, you have no idea what's going on here. 
That was on a Friday. Coop said, hey, sorry, man. You know, he's very professional about it. But Sunday morning, I did a Jericho run, 7 a.m. <laughs> yeah. On that, I had to go through the trucking company back there, and there was like a guard there. He's like, what are you doing? I said, here's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. And he thought that was the coolest thing he's ever heard. Dude. Yeah. So I did that run. It was There wasn't any access on the back, so I had to do a whole bunch of half moons. Mm-hmm. Just did 14 half moons. Yep. That Monday, Coop calls me. He said, hey, the uh, the guy that said we would do the non-refundable earnest money didn't get approval to do that. So everything has since been terminated, and that guy's no longer with the company. Does your group still want it? And they're still in there today. Oh, man. It was – and, you know, honestly, props to Stephen Cooper. Yeah. You know, he's a pro. Mm-hmm. He knew. He's like, look, he's – he knew what to do. He knew that we had it. He yeah. could have called anybody else, but he said, hey, if your guys want it, you've got it. Yeah. So. That's that, awesome. Yeah, that was uh, that was kind of an un, – that was unreal yeah. that, that, that it happened that way. It, 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 couldn't have, it couldn't have happened any other way for us to, to get that building. Yeah. So that was a fun one. That's awesome. Yeah. What a great story. No, <laughs> that was wild. That was a wild one, dude. Uh, okay, so – we could probably do this for five hours oh, easily. Easily. <laughs> um, so we'll just do it again, probably. <laughs> Fine with me. But so, what do you what do you feel? What do you feel are some of the just the, your go to things that have just made you successful? That uh, you know have put you where you are today. The go to things that have made me successful. The consistency. Yeah. Doing it every day, understanding that it's not going to be a quick payoff. Mm-hmm. You know, most people in sales do it for a quick sale, yeah. a quick payoff. To to have the understanding that if you consistently do this, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Yep. Um, and it it will it will pay off. It's um, you know the the greatest salesman in the world. It's right. a great book. Yeah. And that that touches on that. I recommend that anybody, yeah. everybody read that. It's a tough one. It's it a is. 10-month read. 10-month read. If you do it right. Change your life. It will change your life. Um, the consistency. Um, I also have the why. Mm. You know, I want to make sure, my wife and I want to make sure that we're comfortable and my our son's taken care of. Yeah. And everything's set up. And it's amazing when you have children how your perspective on everything changes. changes. Um, another thing that's made me, you know, I'm real good at deflecting confrontation. Yeah. I'm real good at, if I walk in there and you just dog me, dog me, dog me, okay, doesn't bother me. Yeah. You're, I'm not going to ask you to go to a happy hour with me or do anything other than excuse me transact yeah so that thought of i don't know them personally yeah i don't know them outside of work they certainly don't know me i am remarkably easy to get along with yeah but that knowledge that and i had to work on that that you know when i walk in you know i'm coming into their place unannounced it's not like they invited me in yeah. So the ability to understand that you are, you know, infringing on their you're time, an uninvited guest. You're an uninvited guest. Yeah. So to expect anything other than pushback would be mm-hmm. ridiculous. Yeah. They have a job to do. They're trying to do it, and you're in there trying to do something for them that they do every three years. Right. So uh, you you have to understand that yeah. that it's nothing against you. It's the presence of you while they have other things going on. You, you know, something that you do and it might just be a, but you, you always say that's positive, positive. 
That's, that's positive. positive. That's positive. Yeah. <laughs> when I think of Matt Spillman, I think of that's positive. That's positive. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good. I learned that uh, from the freight business. Yeah. You know, the two key words: positive and aggressive. Yeah. Well, that's positive. Yeah. Let's be aggressive about this. Yeah. That's positive. So that's positive. positive is it's just kind of a cool word. It yeah. can't be misconstrued as anything other than what it is. Yeah. You know, it's and it's not just, negative. It's not negative. <laughs> There's nothing about it. Yeah. Nothing about it that's that's negative. No. So there are plenty of others. You know, knowing your market, knowing my market is key. Sure. The availables, knowing what's available. Boy, that's huge. Yeah. That is so huge. It's immediate credibility. Yeah. So, but I think the first three are really the reason that. Yeah. It's a, it's a great answer. I don't, honestly, I, I really like that because that is something I've seen you in some dicey situations with people and you're just, you're a very cool head with that stuff. Thank you. And um, cooler heads usually prevail. So. Thank you. Um, well, what about a book? Maybe you touched on that, but maybe there's another one. You know, um, you know I don't really read anything it's like truly motivational. Yeah. Uh, the greatest salesman in the world, yeah. that is something that everybody needs to read. Yeah. Again, it's a 10-month read if you do it right. Right. If you read the scrolls, you have to read them out loud. Again, whoever you know reads it will understand um, the book I'm reading right now is uh, called Until I Come Home. It's one okay. of my dad's books. Okay. Uh, my great-grandfather was in uh, World War I, was in the trenches in France. And while he was in the trenches, he wrote all these letters to my great-grandmother. Uh. And five years ago, my dad discovered all of these letters. And oh, being wow. a historian, he... Yeah, oh that's gosh. like a gold mine. It was a gold mine. All these stacks of letters that he had written to my great-grandmother. And it basically details the war. It wow. details the war. So these are these letters along with the story. And, you know, my great grandfather made it through the war unscathed. Wow. And then one of his um one of his his employees, you know, after the war was sick. Um and he had I'm not to that part in the book, but I know the story. And my great grandfather said, "You know, I'm going to go see him anyway. He's one of my best friends, and he contracted it and died until he passed. He made it through the f- made it through World War One. Wait, what and did he contract? It was um, this Can, you, you meningitis. Kinda, meningitis. Meningitis. I kind of Arizona that. You kind of Arizona that, right? Glad it you was. Did that. Men, and we'll explain the Arizona thing, <laughs> but contracted meningitis and passed away after <laughs> making it through war. So that's the yeah. book I'm on now. It's called Until I Come Home." Good I mean, book. look at like Chris Kyle. Because you imagine going through all that, and you come back here, and you're trying to help someone. And that's how it goes down. That's absolutely brutal, brutal man. All of that. Well, and you make it. You hear about the, you know, the car wreck. Well, I just got back from doing this, deployed, and all this, and then somebody breaks into their home. It's just a, you know, of course, those are the ones that you hear about. Yeah, but there are just so many. There's so many countless of others. What? Um, Let's touch on Arizona. <laughs> okay. The Arizona thing. Do you want to give the the outline or you want me to just start with the Arizona story? Because I have what, it nutshelled. Yeah, let's let's do the outline. I think okay. we, I think we got some time for that. Okay. So do the outline of it. Okay. So at Mercer, we're somewhere yeah. talking about something. And, you know, I came up. Just, you know, where did you you know, how'd you, you and your wife meet, you know? So, well, kind of weird story because she was from Detroit and, you know, I met her in, on Lake Texoma and she had a boyfriend and then I went to Arizona and we got engaged. <laughs> and everybody's like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Time out, time out. What, what just happened here? What just happened here? And so that was my explanation of how I met my wife. So again, Early on in the days, you know, with Mercer, I was struggling with the details. Yeah. You and Jeff say, no, 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 hold on. Don't Arizona this. <laughs> we need to know exactly what's going on. And man, that has stuck. <laughs> and I've said that before to others who aren't wise to yeah. the whole Arizona thing. I yeah. said, look, I'm not going to Arizona this. And that immediately creates confusion. Like, hold on, wait. Arizona. Yeah. 
does that mean? Yeah. So then I have to explain Arizona and I've completely <laughs> lost whatever audience, <laughs> yeah. you know, that I was trying to get <laughs> because now I've gone on to a different state that makes no sense into what we yeah. were talking about. So yes, the Arizona, that's, that's the Arizona story. That's the Arizona story. So, so be clear. If you're, if you're ever not making something clear, you're Arizoning it. <laughs> yes, you are. And that's, and that's something that I have tried to get better at and always working towards because in my mind I know it. Yeah. So well if you just do this, 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 and this. Yeah, yeah. And it's it's done. It's easy, right? No, it's not. I I'd, I'd always think of one story of us was when we would have the Mercer company dove hunt at Jeff's Ranch. And, <laughs> you know, you and I would get there and like immediately at the time the truck crossed the line off of Old Mount Home Road, it oh. was like Coors Light Coors Light flying. It was like a commercial. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what it was. All we needed was the banner in the back and a camera, and it was a Coors Light commercial. Yes, we're still driving. However, yeah. we are on a farm to market road, and everything's fine. Now. Yeah. That's, and it didn't take long. No. I mean, as soon as we made that, before we yeah. got to the gate yeah. to go into that first pasture. Oh, it was so great. <laughs> that, and you don't miss the duff hunt. No. <laughs> you still do that, right? Yeah. Hunt, good. Yeah. The um but I remember it was Saturday morning and I was like Spellman. It was like 10 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> and I needed a beer. <laughs> I was like, we're out of beer. <laughs> That's right, because you called Jeff. He like, shows Jeff. up in 45 minutes. Oh, he's like flying in with like. <laughs> <laughs> I heard there was an emergency. <laughs> I heard there was an emergency. <laughs> oh, man, oh. those trips. You, you were so, with us when Jeff hit the pig yeah. in the truck, oh, right? Gosh. Were you in the truck? With, I was behind it. Was you were in our truck. We, no. yeah, we, were, we were singing the Hollies. Yeah. The air that I breathe. Yeah. At 5.30 in the morning. Yeah. Yeah, that. Oh, Again, another that was story, scary, man. That, that was scary. Adam Kern, that's right. Adam was in the truck I, with you, Jeff. We don't have time for all these stories. No, I think about when I pissed on the rattlesnake and shot. That was so <laughs> wonderful, dude. <laughs> uh, God, we're like, going to have to have a second episode. I'm down this, with that. So, so many. Um, well, let me, I always like asking this. What's something unique about you or something really no one knows about you that that no one knows about you. No one knows about me in a business. Or not sense. most people do. Just whatever. Like, you know, you can, you know, you can dunk a basketball or whatever. You Cannot know? dunk a basketball. Yeah. I didn't think you could. So um, I wouldn't lean into that one. It's okay. Well, let's see. I'm seven for ten saving turtles crossing highways. Seven for ten. Seven for ten. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll pull you, over. You always will do that. Yeah. You will always stop. I remember there was a massive snake one time. You're like, hold on, let me go move him. I was yeah. like, kill him. You're no. like, no, 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 no. Can't no, kill him. him. <laughs> Can't kill him. Um, I'm very adaptable yeah. to my whatever situation it is. Yeah. I can mold myself to be a part of that situation if need be. Yeah. Um. That's that's something that I've kind of always been that way. Yeah. If we need to be involved or speak about sports, yeah. I can do that. Nature, I can do that. If there's any situation that I'm put in, more often than not, I'll be able, I'll be fine. Yeah. You know, I may not like them, like the big social situations sure. where, you know, hey, look at me and you know all the the, the awesomeness of what everybody is really good at just, okay, I'll yeah. get in there. I'll find something in common. I'll find a way to adapt to whatever situation that I am put into or I put myself into. Cool. Well, that's what makes you a good broker. Thank you, sir. You can deal with a lot of different clients. Yeah. I learned a lot. I, I learned, I have to say this. I learned so much by listening to you and Boozer, just listening to you. And I, distinctly remember not understanding one term and i remember looking it up it's like what did the, jeremy keeps saying this and i looked it up looked it up i was like i can't find it and so in our broker meeting i finally said jeremy what is a cool deep <laughs> cuz i didn't know yeah, well, i had been like, looking for what a cool deep was yeah and i was like i it wasn't even it wasn't even in my real estate classes. What? Uh, 
what is a cool deep? And I tried to break down the root word. I was like, I don't even know how to spell it. Yeah. You know? And oh. so that, I remember that. That's so funny. Cool Joel, Deep. And so the context for that, Cool Deep is a very long-term client of mine. Yes. And his name's Cool Deep. <laughs> and I had no clue. And I was always doing deals with them. <laughs> What's and a I Cool mean, Deep? It drove me crazy. And finally, I was like, I got to ask, what's yeah. a Cool Deep? Yeah. Did not know. Well, let's wrap it up on that, man. You got it, EB. Uh, this is so great, oh, dude. This is great. This is awesome. we, we've got many more of these. Oh, the, there's the gosh. vault is so deep. The vault on these. is, is so, so deep, deep yeah. underground. There's so many, so many stories. Yeah. Dude, so, well, EB, it's great. It's always great to see you. Always glad EB. people can hear your story and. You Love bet. you, man. Love you too, buddy. So, Thanks for having me. It's an honor to be yeah. here. It really and truly is. Absolutely. And I enjoyed every second of it, bro. Matt Spellman, people. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much.